Can you hear me now? Nice. So, we are happy to welcome you at the week of Swiss film in Ukraine. The fifth Jubilee Festival is three documentaries and three feature films, two dramas and a comedy. So together they are the most relevant movies of Switzerland during the recent years. Today we'll discuss the environmental issues, the relationship between the humans and the nature, which are the focus of the program. So now we give the floor to the extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador of Switzerland to Ukraine. Mr. Claude Bild, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, dear representatives of City Administration of Geneva and Vinitsa, Mr. Gomez and Ms. Kravchuk, dear film director Adrien Bordon, dear Mr. Logvinenko as NGO representative who are all participating in today's discussion, and we thank you for that. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of cinema and of nature and environment, a very warm, warm welcome from the side of the Embassy of Switzerland in Ukraine, which is delighted to open the fifth Swiss Film Week <clears throat> 2021 in Ukraine with a discussion among practitioners on the timely subject of sustainable development and environmental protection. For the last five years, the embassy has been organizing the Swiss Films Week in Ukraine. Usually it took place in cinemas. Due to the pandemic for the second year, however, we have to go online. The objective of our Film Week is always twofold. Firstly, to show recent Swiss film to the Ukrainian audience as an intercultural cinematographic exchange. And secondly, to address through these films important societal issues of our time that are as valid in Ukraine as in Switzerland. This year, we focus on the relationship between people and the nature in the cities. We have chosen this topic because ecological challenges, just as the climate change, is a reality all over the world. Therefore, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the so-called SDGs, were adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015. These goals are an urgent call for action by all countries in a global partnership. They recognize that ending poverty and other deprivation must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequality and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans, rivers, lakes and forests. Of course, cinema as a powerful communication vector can do its part in promoting nature protection and responsible human behavior. Indeed, cinematographic productions can reach a broad audience and can raise people's level of consciousness on important societal issues. This awareness rising is highly needed, as we just saw in Switzerland last week, when our new draft law on CO2 emissions limitation was rejected by the majority of voters in a national referendum. Thus, I am grateful to all film directors and producers who, through their films, manage to sensitize the audience about existing ecological issues and promote values of inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable cities and human settlements. I hope this event today will also impact our Zoom and Facebook audience and lead to further fruitful discussions about urgent actions which need to be taken to combat climate change and its impacts throughout the world. With this, I thank you very much for your attention and I pass the floor back to our moderator. Maria, up to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. And now I would like to introduce the participants of the today's round table with the topic nature for everyone and everyone for nature. So Mr. Alfonso Gomez, administrative advisor, the head of the Department of Finance, Environment and Residence of the uh, Local Council of Geneva. Hello. 
Ms. Victoria Kraftchuk, the head of the Department of Urbanism of the Communal Enterprise, the Institute of City Development of Vinitsa City Council, Ukraine. Mr. Adrian Bordonet, the film director and the producer of the film Hotter Than Climate Change, Switzerland. And Mr. Bogdan Lugvinenko, the founder of the project Ukraina, Ukrainian journalist, blogger, writer and traveler from Ukraine. And the moderator of the today's roundtable is me. My name is Maria Druzhinina, the coordinator of the projects of cooperation um, projects of the Embassy of Switzerland to Ukraine. So the first question I'd like to pose to our participants. What's the most potent tool, the most efficient tool in your professional activity, which helps you to impact the local society as for sustainable development and nature preservation? And I would like to ask Mr. Alfonso Gomez to begin the, the, big, the answer. What can you tell about this topic? Please. Thank you. Uh, I will, uh, as we uh, decide before, I will exprim uh, uh, myself in French. It would be uh, easier, I thought. Uh, I hope you understand me. Uh, je voulais simplement uh, vous dire que uh, la ville de Genève s'engage depuis uh, 1995 en matière uh, de développement durable et cela à travers euh, plusieurs programmes euh, politiques et plusieurs actions qui ont euh, porté euh, leurs fruits et cela a été porté par euh, mon administration. Euh, je voulais vous dire que les autorités municipales sont en effet euh, pleinement conscientes de leurs responsabilités en la matière et euh, les villes en tant qu'échelon euh, de pouvoir le plus euh, proche des citoyennes et des citoyens ont aujourd'hui la responsabilité et la possibilité d'initier ce changement. Et euh, ils ont cette responsabilité de montrer euh, la voie d'un véritable tournant énergétique et d'influencer sur le long terme toutes les pratiques en termes de durabilité. On l'a encore vu en Suisse avec euh, l'ambassadeur vient de le dire euh, avec le rejet euh, de la loi euh, sur le CO2. Euh, cela, elle a été refusée sur l'ensemble de la Suisse, mais elle a été plébiscitée dans plusieurs villes euh, et cela est très important pour l'avenir. Euh, C'est aux villes d'accélérer la transition énergétique, c'est aux villes euh, d'accélérer la cadence de la transition écologique. Nous inscrivons euh, notre action de la ville de Genève dans le cadre euh, de ce que l'on appelle l'agenda euh, 2030. La ville de Genève elle développe ainsi euh, depuis de nombreuses années déjà des actions en matière de durabilité et de protection de la nature. Euh, ceci étant, l'un des outils les plus importants dont s'est dotée la ville de Genève est certainement la décision en 2019 de déclarer l'urgence climatique et d'adopter dans le prolongement des objectifs ambitieux, c'est-à-dire diminuer de 60% les émissions de gaz à effet de serre dans son territoire et dans son administration, et cela depuis 2030. Et enfin, d'atteindre la neutralité carbone en 2050. C'est un objectif très ambitieux, difficile à atteindre, mais indispensable. C'est une manière de faire de l'écologie une véritable thématique transversale, c'est-à-dire qui traverse l'ensemble des départements d'une administration, et cela est essentiel. Ces décisions euh, donnent un cadre de référence qui doit être clair pour nos actions et qui nous permettent à la fois de développer des mesures immédiates de lutte et d'adaptation au changement climatique, mais également d'inciter la population à participer à la transition écologique. Elle offre à la ville de Genève les moyens d'agir, d'agir vite et efficacement face à l'énorme défi que représente le changement climatique. C'est fort 
de ces objectifs que la ville de Genève a récemment adopté déjà une vingtaine de mesures urgentes, très, très urgentes, qui permettront de réduire rapidement les émissions de CO2. Permettez-moi de citer notamment toute la végétalisation de l'espace public par la déperméabilisation des sols, c'est-à-dire on enlève le goudron, on met de la terre, on met de la végétalisation l'augmentation de la couverture foliaire, c'est-à-dire le nombre d'arbres en ville, et donc d'augmenter de manière considérable le nombre de plantations d'arbres. Nous faisons aussi de la préservation et de la restauration de la biodiversité en créant de nouvelles zones dans lesquelles la génération, régénération pardon, spontanée est favorisée. C'est ce que nous appelons les forêts urbaines, ainsi que la pérennisation et le développement, et ça c'est important, d'aménagements piétons et cyclables, c'est ce que nous appelons la mobilité douce. Nous remplaçons en quelque sorte les moyens individuels, l'automobile, par des moyens collectifs, les transports en public, ou par des moyens individuels, mais qui sont durables, et cela ça doit se faire et se fera auprès euh, et en collaboration avec les habitants. En parallèle de ces mesures immédiates, on a une stratégie climatique et elle est déjà aujourd'hui en cours de finalisation, de peaufinement, comme, comme, comme l'on dit chez nous, afin d'atteindre l'ensemble des objectifs qui sont très ambitieux et que nous nous sommes fixés. C'est un véritable projet de société. Elle doit permettre d'ancrer les enjeux climatiques au cœur des prestations publiques et d'impulser les indispensables politiques qui doivent être dynamiques et de collaboration entre ce que nous appelons la société civile, le secteur privé et les institutions publiques. Voilà un peu euh, pour répondre à, à votre question. Euh, les outils les plus puissants qu'aujourd'hui nous mettons en marche et le plus puissant de, sous -outils, de ces outils, pardon, et sans contexte, la volonté politique de notre municipalité de faire cette transformation écologique et cette transformation énergétique. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Mr. Gomez, for such a detailed answer. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues with the French interpretation. So we are happy and we are thankful for Mr. Ambassador who will help us for the interpretation. But I would be grateful that in the future you would answer English because we in English because we have some issues about interpretation from French. Mr. Ambassador, we would be help, uh, grateful for your support. Uh, thank you. I, I uh, took, took some notes and I could say that uh, Mr. Gomez was uh, highlighting that since 1995, uh, City of Geneva, Geneva has a conscious, fully responsible policy to bring about uh, the change in the energy policy. Um, cities must be change maker. And this has been recognized in Geneva since 1995 and has ever more grow, grown. Uh, we uh, have seen that, as I said myself, uh, that last week when, uh, unfortunately, I might say for myself, a majority of Swiss population rejected our CO2 laws, that yes, a majority rejected, but uh, those who accepted it were mainly cities who are more conscious about the reality of uh, the need uh, to combat climate change through CO2 re reduction. And uh, in cities, actually, the law has been really uh, passed with a great percentage, uh, Geneva being one of it. So cities must take uh, uh, the responsibility to continue to lead uh, in making the change uh, also in the mind of uh, the citizens. Um, uh, Geneva has, um, uh, as a main tool, the climate uh, urgency uh, of uh, uh, reaching carbon, carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, ecology and environment must be uh, a feature that is treated uh, on a transversal uh, approach 
Uh, it cannot be treated in a silo uh, as a department working for itself. It must enter into any um, policies that have to do with the management of the city. Any policy must have an ecological and environmental uh, dimension. Um, Geneva has also ad already adopted uh, about 20 very concrete measures. And here again, it's, it's very good to discuss and to speak about ecology and environment. But what makes a difference is implementation, really implementation and concrete measures. And there, were, there are all, already 20 of them in Geneva and one of, the, one of it is uh, a vegetalization, putting back uh, nature into the city. There's no reason why cities should be gray and cannot be green. It, we must change our mind and bring nature back into the city and quality of life will improve for everybody while we combat climate change. Here also uh, we must be responsible and putting collective means, collective approach uh, versus individual means, individual interests. And here also it's, um, it's a matter of educating our citizens. Uh, consumption is another way where citizens must be responsible. And here too, city administration can give the good example. Um, climate strategy uh, in Geneva is an, has a, an ambitious goal. It, the goals are ambitious, but it's a change of society goal. Uh, and uh, there must be cooperation between citizens, authorities, and corporate uh, uh, economic forces in the city. This cannot also here be worked in silos. And uh, last but not least, what is absolutely crucial uh, for uh, leadership in, in these areas is uh, a, a strong political will from the authorities to bring about change and to lead into uh, the, this, uh, making this change happen. Uh, that's what I could say in a nutshell uh, that was presented in French by Mr. Al Al Alfonso Gomez. We are really grateful, you, Mr. Ambassador, for your help in the understanding. And now I give the floor to Ms. Victoria Kravchuk. The question is the same, please. Hello, all of the participants. I am sincerely thankful for the invitation to this event. I'm the head of the Department of Urbanism of the Communal Enterprise, the Institute of City Development of Venezia City Council. And in my professional activity, I'm the coordinator of the creation of parks. We are providing architectural competitions. As of today, we have three competitions like that. This is the park uh, chemic of our work of city. I will speak about our city only, Venezia City, which is in the central part of Ukraine with a population of approximately 370,000. The second object is the park of Nathan Altman, and the third is the Garden Museum and the Square named after Mikhailo Kotsubinsky. I'm sincerely considering that the tool of architectural competitions is the best tool ever which can be used by city authorities in the city, because when we select any city space, we are really very substantial in that before the competition, before providing the task for the future architects, we provide certain research, both urbanistic research, which includes uh, the level of vegetalization, the trees which are there. And here I would like to tell you that, of course, we have quantitative research, but also the qualitative research. We define which trees should be left there and which we recommend to delete or to you know, just to take away. Because when we form terms of reference, a compulsory point is the new green carcass in each of those spaces. So this is the green structure for the participants to understand the future situation. I'd like to tell more about that as well, because in 2018, when we began the work of the first architectural competition, we were just calculating the trees and we were defining the local experts were defining their state. But even now, in the competition which we are conducting now in 2021, which has the media name, uh, name Kotsubinsky at home, we invited the arborist from Kyiv city. So we'd like to wish to any bigger or smaller city in Ukraine to have a proper expert, an arborist who would be working 
In fact, in the same applied level, that is with the quality to define the state of the tree and to define how it can be treated. So we have two options. So we either leave it or we get it away or we treat it. So after this research, 99% of trees are staying at the same places. We recommend to leave them and some of them will be treated by the arborists. As for the funding, by the way, I'd like to add that this option was funded partially by the German company GIZ, which is funded by the government of Germany and Switzerland within the uh, project of the city development 2.0. And it's so cool when the cities, though this is the, in fact uh, one of the challenges for the future, that in each of the cities of Ukraine for us to have experts which were working at the different levels, both the applied levels like arborists and the strategic levels and higher. So so this cooperation can allow the best result ever. And as for the climate change, in our work with the public spaces, and it does not concern only the trees, but all of the levels of greening, and it can be done, it can be offered uh, in the very stereotypical way or cliched way, or we can speak about the coming back of the nature to the city. This is when we select the plants at all the three levels, the lawns, the bushes and the trees, which can survive on their own, which don't need that much of care, and it is economically profitable. For instance, in the second competition which we conducted, the um, park at Naltman, uh, the team which won offered some of the approaches which foresee adaptation towards different climate zones. The list of the plants which I mentioned above and collection of uh, rainwater. And in this way, we use this park. The use of this park is not that expensive. These are the advantages. As for the challenges which we face in this work, we have the whole wave of reconstructions and renovations of different territories, including parks. In each of the cities of Ukraine, both the bigger one and the smaller one, we plan some of the reconstructions because lots of the uh, concept developments are done, but it's not that much of implementation. So in our projects, which we are coordinating, we are really thoroughly selecting the projects as winners because those changes which are rather important, by the way, it would seem to be as, as the topic of coverage. It can be very important as well because it always uh, includes the adaptation towards the climate zones because it can be the breathing coverage or the water consuming one. So of course it impacts the public space and also we can look at the hard cover and green cover. And one more important uh, detail in this square, we open the river, a new river, which is so far is closed. We are really big fans of this project because if we open it, this will be the first project of opening of the river. And it's important to make people aware that smaller rivers, which sometimes are considered to be just dirty wells, are really bigger rivers. And we can create wonderful spaces in the cities. We can bring Bring nature back to the city because now it's all full of asphalt and we need to create public spaces for relaxation and for the nice microclimate for the health of each person. Maria, do I have a several more minutes well one more minute maybe okay then a couple of words about the challenges uh, i personally am coordinator of the project on public spaces but we also in each city we have lots of streets and it seems to me the situation is a bit worse because not that many streets have the architectural competitions we need to select the greenery there as well so it would be nice if this challenge was overcome, we should pay more attention to that. And also we would like in each city to have more professionals on urbanism because the work is really very numerous and plenty. We need highly qualified experts with nice education. And uh, the and, uh, I would what I liked in the movie, in the film of Noble Citizen, there was a wonderful quote, knowledge is the most valuable common uh, value. So I think that this uh, 
uh, thought should be uh, known by every citizen, whether this is just a usual inhabitant or the employee of the city council. We begin with the knowledge. If we understand the importance of the knowledge, if this is our first priority, then we hope for all the best and we hope that everything will be the best. Thank you, Victoria, for such a sincere and detailed answer. And I'd like to ask Mr. Adrien Bourdonnais, how can you answer this question? Because the viewers would be interested to know how you highlight this topic in the cinema. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, I'm not uh, politics and I'm not uh, engaged in, uh, in really uh, yeah, politics stuff. And so I don't have the power to change myself stuff. So, so I do it through movies and uh, I've made a lot of different movies with a lot of different themes. But this time what interested me was uh, really the use, the use of Biel. Biel is a little city in, uh, in Switzerland, it's near Bern. And uh, I wanted to, to follow this young uh, movement which, uh, which, uh, which appeared uh, in 2019 after Greta Thunberg's uh, ideas. And, um, and my idea was really not to, to myself to tell what I have to say about climate change and so, because I don't consider myself an expert or, or someone who really knows how to, how to, how to change uh, the world or so, but really to, to give the, the word to these uh, young people, which uh, in Switzerland, it was a really big uh, movement with a lot of uh, young people which get on the street and try to, to protest for, against climate change and for a quicker change of the, the way we, we live and we, we we make politics and so, and uh, that's why I made this documentary about five uh, youth, uh, five young people who try during a whole year to, yeah, quite in a, maybe in a naive way, but they, they really try to change the city and maybe even to change the world. But uh, they were really stopped by the coronavirus because uh, a lot of the, of the movement was based on the idea of getting on the street and making noise and, <clears throat> being all together and so but then came the pandemic so they were a bit stopped in this in this engagement and now they are trying to to go back to to the to the roots of the movement and to go in the street again and so and i think it it's very important and i think they 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 was they were not politicians they were maybe 16 17 years old but in their own way i think they really changed the world because because of them, we, we talk a lot, a lot more about uh, uh, climate problems and so. So I'm very grateful to them. And uh, I consider myself really as a, as a media, as a, as a relation between what they do and, uh, and the public. So my task is really to, to give the, the, the world and the, a bit more power to these young people who really have something to say and really want to, to change uh, the situation. Thank you so much for such an answer, because in fact, it's wonderful that you're giving an opportunity to speak out for those young people. And today, I would like to remind again, we have a kind of a mix of speakers. On the one hand, those are the representatives of local administrations, city administrations, whom you named authorities. And on the other hand, a film director and also the representatives of NGOs who are creating opportunities for the young people to speak out loud and just show how the world can be changed by other people. So I'd like to give the floor now to Mr. Bogdan Lovinenko. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. In fact, I would like to agree with Mr. Bordonet because we also, as the media, are providing the floor to those who are dealing with environmental protection, who is dealing with green innovations or technologies. We had a series, and we go on with this series, and we are working on it for several years, about the national parks of Ukraine. We are shooting footage about the national parks where we have active life and where we have active administration or volunteers who are working there. and. We are trying to create a kind of a model showing nice best practices and to disseminate them, to make them widely spread as much as possible, covering more and more 
layers of society and to cover the topic of volunteers to cover the topics of protection and environment of the environment the sustainability topic as well and also recently we finalized a special project which we created together with the european bank of reconstruction and development and green cubator which had the name of green expedition where we researched various businesses which implement green innovations and green technologies to decrease co2 emissions and to achieve higher sustainability and also with the embassy of switzerland together with the them we are creating two projects simultaneously the first is connected with the environmental project it's called the water expedition so during the three weeks the team at the and with the boat along the dnieper river from kiev to cherkasy have researched the equatorium of the dnieper river they researched and explored environmental initiatives which are working at this territory they told about the culture of behavior on water so we are trying to attract attention to the water resources to the importance of their preservation and proper use and uh, in fact this is what we are doing as a media we are trying to find the existing examples and best practices and to make them widely spread to give the voice to them and also as much audience as possible for those practices to be going on to, to go on and to have some way of their own into the future that's about what we are doing as a media. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Logvenenko, for such an interesting experience. We have spoken about the professional activities. Now let us speak a bit about the personal things. So the second question is the following. What's the most potent tool in your daily personal life which helps you to influence the local society regarding the sustainability and nature protection? So, Mr. Gomez, I give the floor to you. Thank you. I don't hear you. Voila, voila. Thank you very much. I will try to give you my answer now in English. It's not so good that my French, but nevertheless, I, will, I, I hope you will understand me. If not, don't hesitate, don't ask me. Uh, you asked me uh, uh, what is the most potent tool uh, out of you know, my conviction uh, of my personal engagement. It's certainly my strong convictions. Uh, for me, that is the most important tool, uh, to have uh, a chance to influence the society. You need uh, to have a strong personal commitment, uh, strong convictions and a clear political and uh, activist line, I will say. Uh, deviate from your line to go uh, with the wind is, uh, in my opinion, uh, on a forgivable fault in political. And uh, sometimes the wind is with you. And uh, this is the case actually, and especially for the ecologists and for the Green Party, uh, which has made a great progress in the last elections, uh, uh, both at uh, the federal, at the national elections in Switzerland and the uh, municipal, uh, uh, that means the local uh, level. Uh, this is a present uh, and uh, fa facilitating and uh, stimulating situation for us. And we must take uh, advantage of, uh, of this moment. Uh, this uh, green push gives us a big responsibility to achieve uh, during the lifetime of uh, this parliament, the real progress, which must be concrete and visible in terms of uh, sustainable development 
for our city. The citizens uh, wait for that, and that is very important. It's easy for everyone to keep uh, the convictions when the wind is uh, with you, but uh, it uh, but was uh, really important is to remain bright when the, the wind is changes because we need to take some uh, decisions and sometimes some unpopular decisions. My uh, own uh, environmental convictions uh, were born some uh, 30 years ago in uh, 1990, when I was sent uh, to uh, Sudan by the International Red Cross and uh, discovered uh, thousands of uh, colored plastic bags scattered in the, in the desert. It's very impressive. Uh, 20 years later, uh, the sinking of the uh, prestige, uh, the boat, uh, oil tankers of the Galician uh, coast of my childhood uh, uh, convinced me uh, about my, my, my opinions. I took a month's leave to clean up uh, uh, the, the, the beaches along with uh, dozens of volunteers who, who arrived from all over the world. And I remember some of them arrived from Ukraine. And uh, this was a founding uh, event for my commitment uh, uh, today. It was uh, from uh, there that I really began uh, to question uh, growth, to question productions, consumption, and uh, how we respect the life each year in, uh, in, in each moment. You must never forget uh, where uh, you come from, uh, continue to defend uh, with uh, fervor, I hope, and loyalty, uh, the values for uh, which I was elected. And that I think is very, very important. I like debate, I am not afraid of confrontation and it is necessary to convince the other one. It will be not easy because uh, the, the sacrifice the future will be important, and uh, but nevertheless, it's really important to start uh, the, the the path. If we want the world to move towards greater sustainability, in order uh, to offer another world to the future generations, uh, the defenders of ecology need more than ever. Ever, sorry. Uh, to be faithful to their convictions. I mean, we, on ne peut pas décevoir, I, I said uh, usually, uh, whatever uh, we do continue in this way, uh, whatever the weather is good or not, but it's a question uh, of survive, not only for the planet, but of course for the uh, humanian. Thank you for your personal experience that you shared it with us. And Miss Victoria, the floor is yours. The question is the same. Thank you separately for such a question, because really I'm working in the local council, but still I consider myself an activist. And as an activist, I began to shape my convictions together with the program of active citizen from the British Council. Then we began to implement the projects like uh, Green Victory, that is the creation of the public space closer to the river. And we had the discussion what's needed to be done to clear the river or to create public spaces for people to come there. That's what's interesting, because now at this position um, uh, at the Department of Urbanism, we implement the projects which can have the price of 30 million grivne. But when we were activists, we were working with such prices as 30,000 grivne in, in in spite of that, the local projects still impact a lot. And uh, the slogan of the program of Active Citizen is the local actions, but global changes. So I'm sincerely believing in that today. And I can see the effect from the projects which I organize and also together with this program and other activists, we created the urban camp where uh, 
uh, the urbanists came from the whole country and we were sharing our successful practices. I can't tell that we heard lots of practices about the climate change, but still, there was some information, there were certain cases about the parks and the green roofs which were really nice projects. As an activist, I organized the School of Active Citizens where we told about various tools which can be used by the citizens and create, in fact, cool places and spaces and surroundings around them. There are some tools where you don't need to organize any legal or uh, any of the details which would involve uh, legal entities. You just need the wish and information how it can be done. And also I consider that it's important to conduct both for the activists and the workers of the city councils to provide more education and awareness about the tools which can be used by the people to implement their own projects and about the professional ones. Our city is implementing the project like greening of the yards of the multi-apartment buildings or condominiums. So if those uh, projects were scaled up, upscaled, they would uh, impact the cities. But this is the detail, because we need to select certain types of trees, and we should do that properly. We would like those activists to involve consultations of the professionals to do it properly, and because it was done for many, many years ahead, for the decades of years. So we'd like it not only to be new, but to be of high quality, which is very important. And I'd like to add a couple of words about the film, Hotter Than Climate. It was interesting for me to watch it, honestly. It was really touching my heart and uh, my heart of course. But as for the strikes, it was mentioned that when the youth are walking along the streets, first they are seen by other people, other citizens. And some people are surprised, some people are asking, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What is that? And really, it is so cool because it is efficient, it is effective. I share this position, but still, those strikes are... Uh, are coming to the city councils with those recommendations. So if we speak about our city, city of Vinnytsia, I think that the strike is not the most efficient tool. Our city is open for dialogue. So I consider that we can create the round table. It's very easy to organize. We even have the specially created premises for that, which is called the hub, uh, the place for the dialogue of the authorities and the community. And just around the round table with the negotiations, quarters, diplomatic, tactical. We can tell uh, about our painful moments, we can tell about the problematics with a high quality, and we can expect for the response, not only yes, okay, it will be done, but we can expect for the response for cooperation. And it's really efficient when we do cooperate between the authorities and businesses and the community as well. It would be perfect, of course. And we would like to find this way to develop our cities. I'm happy that our city of Vinnytsia has chosen this path. And the first uh, case was our park of Himik, where we, together with the team, provided this dialogue between the authorities and the community. And the community was heard. And now we implement that in the best way. Well, it's my own opinion. Okay, thank you, Victoria, for such an opinion about the synergy, about the cooperation. Thank you that you shared your experience. Mr. Bourdonnais, in fact, this is the question for you, which is more of the response to the previous words, right? But still, we would be happy to hear your personal position about the environmental protection. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for the reaction uh, about the movie and the comment. I think we, we could talk a lot about it, but I, I'll try to be to be quick. Um, yeah, in my own personal engagement is very uh, like everyone else. So I try to consume less and to consume better and so on. I think that everyone can, can do that. So that's the, the first part of the answer to the to the personal uh, engagement of it. So it's it's very important and sometimes difficult but i think if if we all try to 
to get a little bit better in our own personal way to consume, it could be very great. And then I, I try on a, on a personal way too, to, to make like sustainable movie. It means uh, I try to really to work with local people without traveling too much. And so, because the, the, the cinematographic uh, industry can be very uh, unecological uh, too, in a, in, a, in a way, if you work in a traditional way, with a lot of material and traveling a lot. And, uh, and so um, I, I like this idea of uh, working in a, in a local way, even if when I, when I make uh, movies and documentaries and to stay a bit here and to, to, to see what's, what's going on here in where I live and so. And for me, it, it, it's a part of the engagement. And, uh, and last, uh, I, I really like what you what you just said about the movie uh, and uh, the idea of dialogues and so. And uh, I really value the, the idea of, uh, of, of dialogue and uh, not of conflict and so, because I, I feel that uh, some people are, are feeling excluded from this fight for climate. And they think, okay, it's, it's something for, uh, for rich people or for cit citizens of, of big cities or so, and they, they don't know our reality and so. And that's one of the main uh, problem I think is, is these people who feel ex excluded from the, from the fight for climate. And if, if we can dialogue and, and realize that we are all, are all on the self boat, on the same boat and that we, we have to, to join our forces, it could be great. So I like the idea really of, of dialogue and of list, listening what what people feel and uh, that's how the movie is made it's, it's really based on the emotions and on how how people really live and and what they what they fear and so on if we can all talk about it uh, together it's uh, it's great it's a big utopic but it's my way of thinking Thank you so much for such an answer. In fact, Mr. Bogdan, it's your turn. Would you share your experience about Ukraine and the possible cooperation with the authorities? Well, in fact, if we speak more about my personal participants and commitment, I would say that I am I am the active Facebook user and user of different social media, so I'm trying to disseminate information about responsible consumption, about the sorting of garbage and litter, about different initiatives which emerge. I try to support them in different ways as much as I can. I also use them in my projects, which we are creating in Ukraine. And uh, in this way, my personal involvement is really coinciding with what I'm doing in the project itself. So it's not that easy for me to answer this question because we can see that there are lots of intersections between my personal interaction and the project one. Thank you for such a feedback. Thank you. I have an offer, as we have some time left for the Q&A session, you can post them at the Facebook page of the event. Maybe some of the speakers would like to share your opinions and thoughts about some smaller personal actions in your daily life, how they can change and create something big for you personally, for your city, or maybe for your household, for your family. Please, this is the free mic. Yes, Victoria, please. I will use this opportunity. I will add that me as an activist, I'm a volunteer in the Ukraine project. So I am searching the histories and uh, characters. So I may say that I am focusing on the climate change because we are searching for the characters in all of the criteria, in all of the regions of Ukraine. But this is what I'm doing for myself because I like it. In fact, I'm really developing as a personality doing this. So this makes my impact which is not connected with my professional activity, but still this is the impact, the investment of a volunteer as an activist about the change of the conscience. 
consciousness when we watch documentaries for instance we really change our way of thinking so after several videos and deep opinions and thoughts the person can totally change his or her way of thinking and his or her actions begin with the thinking thank you victoria so in fact when we invited the speakers we didn't know about this close cooperation between Vinitsa city and ukraine project it's just a coincidence but we are so happy that this is the synergy which was mentioned for multiple times is really working it's working in spite of the city in spite of the country whatever the country may be so it brings and leads to some visible outcomes and improves the level of life in some of the cities and Ukraine altogether. Maybe anybody else would like to add anything to conclude. We would be happy to listen to you. If not, we don't have any questions then. So then I'd like Maria, to express Maria. my gratitude. Maria, if I may just uh, uh, thank you to all participants for very inspiring um, communication. Also, I think uh, like... Uh, uh, Mr. Gomez uh, said it. It's it's really important uh, not to to be you know technocratic, but to also have your heart into what doing because we are bringing about with the green message. We we bring about quality of life, but it implies sacrifice. It implies the change of what we are used to, and change management, as we know, is always difficult. So uh, uh, we need to convince, yes, but the, the most credible you are is when you are steady. And uh, as you said, Mr. Gomez, uh, the wind can change, but you know why you are not going with the wind. And this at the end, I am observing from uh, since I'm 57, I'm observing the Swiss uh, green push finally coming about. They had hard time, but their message didn't change from the 70s. And suddenly now the society is ready because they have seen uh, that it is wise uh, to be closer to nature. And in fact, all parties in Switzerland have copy paste some parts of the green. Uh, they all want to be a bit green uh, and, and pretend that, um, uh, but but uh, uh, really, I think this is an important um, attitude, huh? not just uh, aptitude, but attitude uh, has to has to be here. And I would, uh, I would <laughs> conclude by saying that there is a, a saying in French, I don't remember who said it, but I like it quite a lot. Uh, plus on s'éloigne de la nature, plus on se rapproche de l'erreur. In, in, in English, it is uh, the further you are away from nature, the closer you are from mistake. And it's, it's, it, it, it is a, a nice piece of wisdom. Uh, that would be my conclusion. Thank you very much for everybody who participated. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for such a wonderful conclusion of this wonderful discussion. I wish all of you a wonderful night. Thank you again. And I do invite you to watch Swiss movies, which are accessible by the link swissfilm.org.ua. Up till the end of this week, on the 27th of June, I wish you a nice screening and see you at the next festival. See you. Goodbye. Au revoir. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Au revoir. Thank you. Bye bye. Au revoir. Au revoir.